I've got my area drawn that I want to revolve around that y-axis. So my solid, if I do that mirror image, is going to look something like this. In order to find this volume, we're going to use cylindrical shells. Let me go ahead and draw one into our figure. And the cylindrical shell is gonna drop right around the axis of revolution, sitting like this. From this picture, you can see that that height is really in the y direction. So my height is in the y direction and it goes up to that curve, which is the square root of x. And my radius, so the radius is going to be right here. Let me pull it down a little bit right here. That's gonna be in the x direction and it's gonna be between zero and four in the x direction. Now I'm gonna be taking these cylinders and I'm gonna be stacking them. So they're gonna be stacking on the outside and then on the inside. And as I stack up all of these cylinders, I'm gonna end up filling the space. So in order to get a volume out of this, I'm gonna take each of those cylinders and just flatten it. So I'm gonna take that cylinder and I am going to cut it. Let me write it like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down the side. And as I cut it, I end up unrolling it just like I would like a paper towel roll or something. And I end up with a rectangle. So that rectangle has my height and that height is the square root of X. But that width, that width is really the circumference of that circle. So the width is gonna be a two pi r, and the r that we had is that x value. So I can say for this example anyway that my width is equal to two pi x. So my area, so the area for this rectangle is two pi x times my height, which is the square root of x. Now there's one other thing that we need, and that's the thickness. The thickness is going to be perpendicular to the height. This is what's going to determine my variable of integration. That thickness in this case, perpendicular to your height, is a dx. So we do want to keep all of our variables of integration in terms of x. Let's go ahead and put our formula together. So this is what our formula is gonna look like. Our volume is equal to the sum of all of the areas of those cylinders with their thickness. So it's going to be area times thickness. So that's gonna be two pi r, that's gonna be my width, times my height, times either dy or dx. In our case, it's gonna be a dx. Now I can put this a little more specifically for our case. So we're integrating along the x. Everything is with respect to x because of that dx. So I know I'm gonna take those limits of integration that I've got here, which is between zero and four. That cuts off that area in the x direction. So I'm gonna integrate from zero to four, two pi, my radius is almost always either your variable of integration or it's just gonna be some little altered form of the variable of integration. In this case, it is just x, that's my radius. My height, my height goes up to that curve, which is the square root of x, and then I've got my dx. Once I'm here, I'm in really good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and do the integral, and then we'll do one more example where we revolve around the x-axis instead. So continuing with this, I've got zero to four. That two pi, I can pull it on the outside. I'm gonna leave it there for now. This is really a one-half power, and the other x is a power of one. So I can combine those by writing that as x to the three-halves power dx. So this really works out pretty nicely. My volume is, I can get that two pi, and then the antiderivative of x to the three halves. I need to add a two halves to that, and that's gonna make that one a five halves. So I've got x to the five halves with its reciprocal two fifths out in front, and I'm evaluating that from zero to four. Simplifying what we've got, we end up with a four pi fifths out in front, so four pi fifths, and then I need to take that antiderivative and evaluate it at four and at zero. So four to the five halves minus zero to the five halves, but you gotta love zeros, that just goes away. And I really only need to worry about four to the five halves. So four to the five halves, that 
half is really a square root. So that's going to be the square root of 4. And then I'm going to take all of that to the fifth power. Well, this ends up to be 2 to the fifth, which is a 32. So what I really have here is 4 pi fifths times a 32. And that is equal to 128 pi fifths. Here's the area that we're going to revolve this time around the x-axis. If I go ahead and draw it in, just sketching what this looks like, it's going to look something like this. Not the best picture, but you get the idea. What I really want to do here is to drop in a shell. And that shell is going to go right around my axis of revolution and line up with the walls of my solid. Okay, so my shell looks like that. Let me go ahead and pull it off of that solid so we can get a better view. I really want to determine what my thickness is. And that thickness, always perpendicular to your height, in this case is going to be a dy. That means we want all of our functions in terms of y instead. This is going to be my variable of integration. Let's go ahead and start there. Well, my red line is just y equals x, so that one works. I don't need to solve for x. The second one is y equals x squared. So I do need to solve for x so that I've got my function in terms of y. Let's take a square root, a square root, and I can say that x is the square root of y. Now we can start to put this together. I know that I want my volume is equal to the integral from, I want my y values. I'm going to say from c to d, 2 pi r times h times my thickness, which we determined to be a dy. Let's go ahead and start with those limits of integration. So I know that my limits of integration are going to be the lowest y value for that original area and the highest y value for that original area, which happens to be 1. If you don't see that it's 1, you can set your 2 functions equal. y is equal to the square root of y. I can square both sides. y squared is equal to y. And I end up with my two solutions as being either a 0 or a 1. So those are my two limits of integration. I also need to figure out what r is. That radius is going to be measured from the axis of revolution up. I know it's going to be related to my variable of integration, and if I'm lucky, it's just going to be my variable of integration. Well, I know that those y's are going to go between 0 and 1, and that exactly follows the direction of those radii. So I can just leave my radius as y. Last but not least is my height. So my height is measured right here. And I can see that that height is really the distance between those two functions. So to figure out what that height is, I need to do, so height is equal to, I need to do my rightmost and subtract my leftmost. So this is going to be my rightmost function minus my leftmost function. So that's going to give me, let's see, that's going to be that curve, which we solved as the square root of y, minus the leftmost, which is x equals y. I've got all the pieces that we need. Let's put it into the formula. I can factor that 2 pi out in front, and I'm going to do that. My limits of integration go from 0 to 1. And then I've got that r is equal to y. And then that height was the square root of y minus y. And I have my dy on the end. Now, if you're feeling super confident with your calc skills, go ahead and fast forward to the end. I'll give you the answer. Otherwise, this is a really nice one to work through. Let's go ahead and finish it. As I work through it, I get 2 pi here, 0 to 1. I'm going to distribute that y. So I'm going to think of the square root of y as a 1 half power instead. So that y to the first times y to the 1 half gives me a y to the 3 halves. And then I get a y squared here, so minus y squared, and then a dy. I'm ready for the antiderivative. It's going to be super nice with the limits of integration of 0 and 1. As I add a 1 or a 2 over 2 using my power rule, I end up with a y to the 5 halves power. 
and I'm going to multiply that out in front by its reciprocal of two-fifths. And on the second one, I get y cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. Now, I really do need to do the antiderivative at 1 minus that antiderivative at 0. But notice that every term has a y in it. So when I put a 0 in, it's just going to go away. So all I've got to do is to plug in 1. So I get 2 pi. 2 fifths times 1 to the 5 halves minus 1 third. So if I do the math there, I get 2 pi. That's going to be 6 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths. And we end up with our answer, which is 2 pi fifteenths. You are doing great. I've got another video for you here.